Hey guys, it's Nihon Reboot. Today, I want to talk about the differences between living in a rural area and living more in the city, like uh, Osaka. So, there's going to be some pretty obvious ones and uh, some not so obvious. So, I'm just going to do like a pros and cons kind of thing and uh, let you guys decide like what area would you rather go. Now, uh, let's decide like first up, are you going for work or are you going to be going for um, studying? So, if you're going to be studying, Without a doubt, like if you're truly wanting to improve your Japanese language, the uh, rural areas are going to win, like literally every time. Like if that is your sole purpose, uh, that's what you want. You want the rural areas. Why? Because they're. If you go into a big city, like let's say Kyoto, Osaka, Tokyo, those kind of areas, there are a ridiculously high amount of foreigners, and because of that, um, there's a lot more English going around. A lot more Japanese people know English. A lot more people that <clears throat> are learning English, they tend to focus in those areas. And you're not going to get as much exposure. You're going to have a lot of people approaching you, trying to become friends and be like, oh, please teach me English. And that's a very, very common thing that I had in Osaka. Uh, Tokyo is the same story. Lots of English support. Uh, taking a rural area, on the other hand, uh, let's, let's, let's say uh, Shimane, which I spent quite a bit of time in, uh, Shimani, on the other hand, when I was in the, uh, the university, they told me I was one of only two Americans on campus. And so, when I saw that, or heard that, I was like, wow. Uh, when I was down there, also communicating with the Japanese, it was a night and day difference as well. So, with, you know, the, you know I mentioned earlier, in, with Osaka, um, being on campus, Kansai Gaidai, I would constantly be approached by people. They would be like, oh, nice to meet you. My name is this, this, this. Three sentences later, they would always say, please teach me English. Please teach me English. And when I first got there, I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? You know, that's that's perfectly fine. Because uh, I'm going to be speaking Japanese to them. But literally, when it got to the end of the day, like, let's just say like the first week of school, like every single day, People were just coming to you constantly, constantly, constantly. And their very like third or fourth sentence was, please teach me English. And it got frustrating because I'm like, seriously? Really? Like, I came across the world to study Japanese. And when I was in my university in America, and ever I tried to talk to the Japanese people, they told me, look, we understand that you're trying to study Japanese, but we came to America to learn English and practice English. So we want to speak English. That's a fair enough, you know, thing. You know, they, they came and they study, they came to study English. So, if someone's going to spend their time, money, and resources to go across the world to learn the language, you know, getting bombarded by people that are just saying, please teach me English, please teach me English, I have no chances to speak here. It's good to an extent, like, no, you, you just really can't do that, like, you're, <sighs> sorry, Tr lost my train of thought. But yeah, like, that's just something that you're going to encounter a lot. In Japan in general uh, taking on the rural areas on the other hand my time there it was like a night and day uh, difference my time at Shimane University just hanging out in the Shimane area in general I was constantly meeting people on campus but it was for an entirely different reason altogether they were coming to me just because I was different um, which like I said I was one of only two Americans so that was really good you know, they came up to me, it was effortless, just like how it was in Osaka. The difference is, though, that these people didn't really care about speaking English. They're like, no, no, please, please talk to me in Japanese, is what a majority of them said. They wanted to be talked to in Japanese. And that is great, because literally from morning to night, every day, all day, I was in, like, strict Japanese language mode. And it was great. I was getting so much more immersion. Night and day difference. Like, I cannot stress enough. If you're going to be studying abroad and you really want to improve your language and you're not more focused on, um, you know, nightlifes and having fun and partying and things like that. Like, if the language is strictly your goal, then yeah, a rural area is good. Definitely. And there are still some nice things to see. Yeah, you can definitely see some nice things in a rural area. They have their own, you know, unique nature and things like that. But that's about it. All right, so now I'm going into the cons. One, there is nothing to do. This is a given. Like, if you are in a rural area, you're going to literally see nothing but rice fields for days. I I'm not even joking. 
Just, there's nothing to do there. Uh, when I was, I, oh my god, there was literally nothing, like, literally. I, I can't stress enough. Okay, so, two, train systems. There aren't really any. So where I was in Shimano, there was one train. One train. That's it. It came, like, once, or it came, like, twice an hour, uh, and they used, like, an old-fashioned punching system. Like, you know, you take your ticket, punch a hole in it, you go. Uh, taking literally any other modern area, there are, like, hundreds upon hundreds of trains. There, They come every, like, five, ten minutes. Uh, you get to use, like, a digital card that you just tap and go. It's a much more advanced system, and the trains are newer. The one in Shimane was creaking and rocking really hard, and I thought I was going to die. Uh, I literally thought, like, holy crap, this train is not built to run. Three, shopping. There isn't any. At all. Like, I mean, at this point, you know, people are going to say, like, oh, he's kind of biased about the, you know, the rural areas. But it's true. Like, you really can't compare a rural area to a massive city like Osaka or Tokyo or Kyoto. It just doesn't, you know, Goya. It just doesn't compete. There's so much more food uh, restaurants to go to. There's so many more shopping stores, malls, uh, nightlife in general, literally entertainment. You can get it in a big city area. It's great. Uh, next up, rent. Rent um, in Tokyo, I was, when I lived in Tokyo, my rent was about roughly 11 bucks a night. So I'm um, doing the math, let's just say. Oh my god, I'm so bad at math. 30 days, 300 and something-ish. We'll just say 400 bucks. Let's go with that. Because I also had to, like, pay for, um, my showers. Which is, like, 100 yen or $1 for 10 minutes. And there was also, like... Oh my god, like, the, the apartment there was pretty weird. Because you had to pay for your shower separately. And you had to pay for your air conditioning in your bedroom. It was, like... And again, 100 yen for an hour of air conditioning. So it wasn't too bad. So we'll just say 400 bucks a month. Take my apartment in Osaka. That was also around the $400 range. So overall, like big cities, like if you're not too close to like the heart of it, you know, somewhere three to 400, that's pretty reasonable and that's pretty common. Uh, Shimane. The place that I stayed at was also around that same price. It was around three hundred dollars. So uh, when it really comes down to it, but like Shimane, like it doesn't matter, really matter where you live. It's it's all seems to be like somewhere around that price for like a one bedroom small uh, shoebox. Just because like, there really isn't like any areas of prominence, maybe the university uh, that would make you know an apartment rise in price. Whereas in, you know, Tokyo or Osaka, the closer you are to the core heart of the city, the more the price rises up. Okay, so let's see. We've talked about... I'm trying to think of anything else off the, off the top of my head. Traveling. Traveling, I guess that's the last thing I could think of. Uh, traveling is also significantly easier if you're in a big city. Because you get access, again, to more trains... Uh, more Shinkansens or bullet trains. Basically, just transportation is more frequent and better overall. And because of that, you can get from point A to point B much easier, and that includes going to a different city. Living in a rural area, you kind of need a car. You kind of do. I you wouldn't even need any kind of vehicle whatsoever for a bigger area. It, like, when I was down there, there were times where I definitely missed having a car, Specifically, like, when I went grocery shopping, to um, you know, I had to limit myself to what I can carry, so it was, like, two or three bags. Um, and then I would go for, like, a 15, 20-minute walk back home. Uh, so, yeah, I could have bought a bike, but I chose not to, because the, the bikes pretty much all come with, like, little baskets that you can put the stuff in. Uh, I chose not to because I knew I'd be leaving in a year, and I'm waiting to go back for a long period before I get a bicycle. Uh, the only time that I really truly regretted having a car was when I was buying furniture for my apartment. And I kid you not, like, uh, before I knew that you can get it delivered to your house, I bought, like, tables, chairs. I made, like, four trips in one day to a furniture-ish style store. And I carried the stuff 
from the store to my house and it was about a 35 40 minute walk and so everything weighed above 50 pounds to 100 pounds on average like it was a table it was a chair uh bedding so i was tired by the end of it um it wasn't until later that again i figured out you can get delivered but oh well um but yeah other than that you don't really need a car shimane because there's only one real train uh or just rural areas in general where there's less trains, less buses. Um, you really do need a car to get around. Yeah, you can get, you know, you could probably use your bike more, but again, a bike isn't as efficient as a car. So, yep, that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, just uh, shoot me a message or actually do something in the comments. Um, I'll get to it pretty quickly or talk on my Facebook, send me a Facebook message. I'm much faster on that than I am on anywhere else because I pretty much live on Facebook. But, uh, yeah, if you like the video, feel free to comment, subscribe, you know, the, the whole stereotypical thing that every J-blogger or every YouTuber is supposed to say. Do those. Alright? Also, huh? Yeah. No more ugliness in the background, right? Yeah. Alright, better microphone, better background, better camera, average me. I don't know. I guess I'm better. I'm improved slightly. I don't know. Let me know what you think with this whole new setup right here. So I pretty much upgraded everything for the sole purpose of preparing my YouTube channel for the next leap. And um, I'm really looking forward to it because once 2017 hits, I'm definitely going to be starting to make more videos more frequently. Um, I have actually three, no, no, four, four job interviews with uh, English companies over in Japan. And I also have a couple in Orlando. Uh, for English Japanese companies that are looking for a bilingual speaker so things are looking pretty bright I also submitted my jet application in today so that's the fifth one I guess I'm like lots of potential job offers obviously I'm gonna go for the Japan ones first um, hopefully I get one I have an interview coming up in two days so that's another reason why I got this green screen back here you know side note the background was ugly and every time I interviewed they looked at it and they probably thought I was some kind of slob but in all reality, that background in my previous videos, it's not mine. I'm just temporarily staying here in this little office room. Uh, and I can't really, well, I'm not allowed to really move stuff. So I kind of just have to deal with it. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you again.